Hi everyone, here's the video for your pronoun vocab quiz. The first word we have is who, which means he. Oh, incidentally, you can follow along on page 92 if you like. The next word is he, which means she. There's another alternative form pronounced he, which also means she. And you'll see that it's spelled differently. So here we have a yod in the middle, and in the second form we have a bob in the middle. And if you compare that to the way the Hebrew pronoun that means he looks, so if we go back to our first word and we ignore the vowel pointing, they both look the same. So the Masoretes, the people that came up with the vowels, uh, had a way of differentiating between when this particular form meant English he and when this particular form meant English she. Uh, this is called a, if you want to know the technical term, a carré perpetuum. In other words, whenever you see this form, it's always read he, even though it looks very much like who. Thoroughly confused yet? I hope not. Anyway, this form shows up a lot in the Pentateuch, and after that, not so much. The next word is ata, which is masculine you. The next word is at, which is feminine you. And you'll notice that it has uh, a uh, what we call a kamatz, little T-shaped vowel, which is often pronounced ah, but occasionally can also be pronounced o. Oh. So sometimes you'll see that little line to the left of it, that little vertical line. Uh, the technical term for that is called a metheg, which means bridle in Hebrew, I guess, something that you use on your horse. I'm not quite sure. Um, but in any event, when you see that little metheg, there next to the kamatz vowel, the T-shaped vowel, it means that um, it's telling you don't get confused. This is really pronounced ah and not o. Oh. So there is a Hebrew word ot, uh, which looks very much like this word. So they're telling you don't get confused. Here it's really ot, and um, that's the way you should read it. So the masculine form is ata, the feminine form is ot which is also a little confusing. Most languages, the most commonly words, commonly used words are the most confusing words, usually the most irregular words. Our next word is ani, which means I. The next word is anochi, which is an alternate form for I, and usually anochi is used um, in formal language, so sometimes God will use this word uh, when speaking about himself. Sometimes it's used emphatically. So um, when Cain is accused or questioned by God of killing his brother, he says, am I my brother's keeper? So he uses this word, anochi. Uh, my brother's keeper. So the sense here is likely that he's saying, who, me? Am I my brother's keeper? Um, and of course God says, yes, you are. The next word is haim, which means they. There's an alternate form, hema, which shown on page 92. doesn't come up in the Bible all that often, so I'm just having you use the first form, or learn the first form, haim. The next word is heina, which is they feminine. The next word is atem, which is you all masculine, you plural masculine. And remember, as long as there's one man in the group, it's the whole group is considered masculine. The next word is Atena, which is you, feminine, y'all feminine group. And there's an alternate 
form here, Atain, which I think only shows up once in the Hebrew Bible, so I'm having you learn the Atena form. And our final word is Anachnu, which means we. And there should actually be a dagesh in that final uh, vowel there, and I see that got left off. So uh, Anachnu means we, and that's it for pronouns. Good luck studying.